the All Canadian Reptile Girl with me, Annalise. Today's video is all about some of the amazing snake species that you can find in Canada when it's not winter. This is my first proper full video of 2021, so if you missed my Happy New Year's wish a couple of weeks back in my first short video of 2021, Happy New Year. As you can see, I've got a new set! We are still tweaking the decor, but I think this is gonna work well. But enough about that. Let's move on to the five coolest Canadian snake species. Before we start, I have another exciting piece of 2021 news. I have merch! If you're looking for a new t-shirt, hoodie, mug, mask, or whatever, take a look at the link in the description below. I have all sorts of cool All Canadian Reptile Girl stuff, and it's a great way to support my channel. And I really appreciate you checking it out. There will be new designs in the future, so if you have any feedback or suggestions, let me know. Okay, on to cool snake number five, bull snake. What is this? No, not that kind of bull snake. Bull snakes, like Gurgle Snout here, are awesome. They are found in southern Saskatchewan and Alberta, and are arguably Canada's largest snake, getting up to eight feet long. Oh, little guy, I think you got some growing to do. Canada's longest recorded snake is actually the gray rat snake, but generally speaking, bull snakes tend to be a little longer and are more thickly built than those guys. Bull snakes are colubrids, just like rat snakes, king snakes, corn snakes, and garter snakes. They are powerful constrictors that eat mice, frogs, prairie dogs, and even birds. Rats are a favorite too, but for the bull snakes residing in Alberta, they have to make do without these tasty treats. Thanks to Alberta's diligent rat control efforts, it is the largest populated rat-free area in the world, much to the dismay of the Albertan bull snakes. Poor guys. In the wild, they employ a defensive strategy called Batesian mimicry. This is when a harmless animal will disguise itself as something more dangerous. In Gurgle Snout's case, it's having a pattern that closely resembles the rattlesnakes that overlap their range. When threatened, they will coil up and aggressively shake their tail. This is called tail buzzing. Unlike a rattlesnake that holds their tail up high to really show it off, bull snakes will hide their unrattlesnake-like tail and shake it vigorously in the leaves and grass to make a very rattlesnake-like sound. They also posture their head up high with their mouth open and they force air out of a specially structured windpipe or glottis, making an extremely loud and startling hissing noise. That'll get your attention, huh? <laughs> In the number four spot is a snake that does not need to impersonate a rattlesnake because it already is a rattlesnake. Canada's fourth coolest snake is Ontario's Massasauga rattlesnake. This chubby little snake is the smallest of the three rattlesnake species in Canada, the other two being the western rattlesnake and the prairie rattlesnake. Don't get me wrong. The other two Canadian rattlesnakes are amazing, but in my opinion, don't hold up to the Massasauga. There are two reasons why these guys are in the fourth spot instead of them. One, they are found within easy driving distance from my house, and even though the odds are slim because they are critically endangered here, I might actually find one in the wild, which would be incredible. And two, I just think that they're the cutest ones. Hey, it's my list. I'm allowed to be biased. This two to three foot snake is Ontario's only medically significant venomous snake. There are other venomous snakes like the hognose snake or even the garter snake, technically, but those pose no real threat to humans at all. Even though the Massasauga rattler is medically significant, they wouldn't normally be considered deadly. They are very shy, very unlikely to bite, and they don't usually inject a lot of venom, if any at all. And that venom is relatively mild, 
you know, for blood melting rattlesnake venom. There are only two reported deaths from Massasauga rattlesnakes and they were both from more than 50 years ago. That said, if you do come across one of these guys in the wild, don't try to touch it. Observe it safely from a distance and leave it alone. Just because the bite won't kill you, doesn't mean that it won't ruin your day. Next up in the number three spot is another venomous Canadian snake. Albeit only mildly venomous with their fangs way at the back of their mouth. So human envenomation is not very common. It's the Plains hognose snake. There are two species of hognose snakes in Canada. The Plains hognose snake, like Higgins here, and the Eastern hognose snake. Both are beautiful and awesome snakes, but I think that the edge goes to the plains. Here's why. Look at that adorable little face. <sighs> In addition to being super cute, the Plains hognose snakes also tend to have a better temperament than the Eastern hognose snakes. Both species will feign death when threatened or stressed, but the Easterns tend to do it more readily and with a little more, let's call it style. The Plains hognose snakes on the other hand tend to be a little more calm and relaxed and are generally make better pets. Don't you, buddy? Yes, you do, even when you're cranky. Just like bull snakes, the plains hognose snakes use Batesy and mimicry to look and act like a rattlesnake. In spring and early summer, hognose snakes can be found in the grassy, sandy areas where they feed on small animals. Toads in particular are a favorite. The toads, who shockingly don't want to be eaten, where are you going? The toads, who shockingly don't want to be eaten, will often defend themselves by filling up with air, making them bigger and harder to handle. It is a very common misconception that hognose snakes use their rear fangs to pop inflated toads, but that fang is actually nowhere near long enough to do that. Instead, they will latch onto their prey and let their mild venom sedate and subdue their meal while they slowly work at swallowing their newfound friend. New research on these guys have found that in the hottest parts of the summer, they often move out of the grassy and sandy areas and to the wetland areas. There, they will climb on reeds or other vegetation and suspend themselves and suspend themselves over the water. When an unsuspecting frog hops or swims up, they strike from above like a viper. They may look chubby and derpy, and seem incapable of even just holding on to you. But turns out they have some serious athleticism. Who knew? Number two is a really cool snake. It's British Columbia's mighty rubber boa. Rubber boas are great little snakes. As a boa, they are related to boa imperators like my girl Tatuba or Romeo here, my Doomrolls boa. Just a lot smaller. A lot, a lot smaller. Rubber boas are one of the three boa species found in North America. The others being the rosy boa found in the US and Mexico, and boa imperators and their various subspecies and probable subspecies found in Mexico. Rubber boas get their name because of their loose, wrinkly skin, gives them a rubbery appearance and feel. My dad thinks they look like cat poo, but I still think that they're awesome. They are very gentle and make fantastic pets. Even wild specimens very rarely bite. Unlike most snakes, they don't do well in warmer temperatures at all. In fact, they like it quite cool and are among one of the most cold tolerant snake species in the world. See, I told you that they were a really cool snake. Comedy jokes, folks, I'm here all week. Rubber boas live in a wide range of habitats, including grasslands, meadows, deciduous and coniferous forests. They can even thrive way up high at elevations over 3,000 meters. They feed on small mammals, baby birds, even bats. They're also known to eat snake, bird, and lizard eggs too. In the wild, they are often observed with heavy scarring on their tail. This is due to how they use their tail as a predatory and defensive strategy. Their tail is a lot stubbier than most snakes, giving their head and tail very similar profiles. When threatened, they will coil up with protecting their head while leaving their tail out mimicking the head and presenting a much safer target for the predator to attack. 
But I can't imagine that being terribly successful of a strategy against a coyote that would just gobble him up in one bite, or a hawk that would just grab it and go. But better than nothing, I guess. Where this really pays off, though, is when they are hunting. They like to seek out rodent nests that have bite-sized babies inside, and they use their tail to fend off and distract the mother, who thinks that she's attacking the head, while the other end of the snake chows down on the entire litter. It's pretty savage, but that's nature. Okay, here we are at my pick for the undisputed coolest snake in Canada. This snake has an array of staggering, incredible abilities. They are fearsome predators and amazing survivors. Canada's most amazing, coolest snake species is the garter snake. Okay, stay with me here. I know what you might be thinking. Huh? Garter snakes? Really? Yes, really. Look, I get it. They aren't terribly big and they don't usually have dazzling colors or are highly venomous. They're super common in North America, so it's not like it's even very special to find one. They're a dime a dozen and easy to overlook, but you really shouldn't. There are six species of garter snakes in Canada. I have two of them in my collection. Here is Roy, one of my four plains garter snakes. And this is Dwight, one of my three stunning valley garter snakes. If you are a regular viewer, you probably know that I love garter snakes and have done several videos on these amazing snakes. So instead of doing another full deep dive into these guys, I'm just gonna do a rapid fire list of some of the ways that they are awesome and why I think they now have top spot as the coolest snake in Canada, maybe even the coolest snake in all of North America. There may only be six species here in Canada, but overall there are 85 plus species and subspecies found throughout North America with a huge array of colors. They can survive just about anywhere, from Canada's Arctic Circle to the deserts of Mexico. They are one of the only social snake species, not only hibernating in huge groups, but also forming close, long-lasting bonds between individual snakes. How many other snakes have best friends? Huh? How many? Hmm, that's what I thought. They have a complex system of communication using pheromones and body language. They are exceptionally cold tolerant for a reptile, only the European adder and the European common lizard can handle lower temperatures. They are poisonous. Yes, I said poisonous. Garters that eat toads and newts absorb their toxins and use it to make themselves poisonous to eat. They are also venomous, just not to us at all, but they are to those toads and newts that I mentioned. They give birth to live young, teeny little wiggly squirmy babies that are so cute. They are everywhere in North America, widespread in Mexico, in every province in Canada, and except for Hawaii, they are in every US state, including Alaska. They make terrific pets. They are really a lot more active and interactive than most pet snakes. And most importantly, they're so cute. So that's it for today. What do you think of my five coolest Canadian snakes? I know that there are lots of other amazing Canadian snakes. Do you think that some of them should have been on the list instead? Tell me your thoughts. If you have any topics you would like me to cover in a future video, put that in the comments too. Thanks again for watching. Please check out my other videos, my Instagram, oh, my merch. Check that out too, please. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and make sure you click that bell icon so you never miss an upload. But most importantly, remember to nurture all nature. I'll see you next time. Bye. Happy 2021. I borrowed a rattlesnake. We're not borrowing a rattlesnake for a video. Just keep it in a Tupperware container. We're not borrowing a rattlesnake for a video. Why? We would not touch it. We are not borrowing. It would a be in a locked container. We are not borrowing a rattlesnake for a video. We're going to borrow a goose. We're not borrowing <laughs> a rattlesnake. <laughs> Not now! Video. Clearly not now, but we could have. We should have. Carry on. Very similar profile. And when the. Hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> well, that'll be in the bloopers. <sighs> five coolest Canadian snakes. I can't really make a five, but that's five.
He's like, no, I'm the star now.